All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sensei, Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear forbearing and sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrew Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And I'm inciling this epistle. Jake is playing all the wrong games. And this came to me in the spirit after listening to um, an epistle done by the beloved brother Shapar the 12. All right. And he was getting into how I believe he titled his epistle. Um, um, asking the Christian church, how are you saved? And the beloved brother, he was getting into a bunch of um, like <laughs> it was it was more than I would expect. Like, it's nothing new, you know, to see and, and hear about these churches having uh, all types of scandals and just uh, bad things happening and un like, you know, misfortunate events and stuff like that. But to show you how much you how about me, I was the heavenly father whom the world ignorantly calls God and his only begotten son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. How much. The true heavenly father and his only begotten son is not with the Christian church. Man, the brother, he pulled out like at least, at least, if I could think of off the top of my head, like five different articles or five different stories getting into something crazy that happened in the Christian church. Like one article the brother pulled up, it had something to do with like uh, a homeless man asking some people at the church for uh, food or I think money or something, something along those lines. And, you know, they basically kept shooing him off and stuff like that. And then he came back and he opened fire, you know. And, you know, we already understand when we get into the precepts about um, how to deal with the poor. You know, when we get into the uh, the civil laws in Israel and the moral laws, we get into how we are supposed to handle an Israelite that's fallen on hard times. OK. But we already know the Christian church, they don't read the Bible, man. Everything's a money grab to them. But, you know, let me go ahead and just let me go ahead and just start this off with a precept. All right. I'm, fl I'm flowing in the spirit. I didn't exactly, you know, line up any precepts for this for this particular lesson. But. Um, let me get the book of. Yeah, I'm going to get the book of First Corinthians, chapter 14. So like you. 14 and verse 40 and it reads let all things be done decently and in order all right and we get this precept often but today i'm gonna get into the intralinear and you know break this down so you know to you know uh, on a deeper level let me see if i can get what i want to get first decently let's get the word decently strong's g 2156 Use manos. Use manos. Use manos. Outline of biblical usage in a seemly manner, decently, honestly, decently. All right. Strong's definition: use manos. Adverb from Strong's G twenty one fifty eight. Decorously, which you know gets into the word decorum. Uh, decently and honestly. All right. So that's that. Now let's get order. Strong's G five thousand ten. Toxis. 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 Outline of biblical usage and arranging arrangement. Order. A fixed succession observing a fixed time. Do or right order. Orderly condition. The post rank or position which one holds in civic or other affairs, since this position generally depends on one's talents, experiences, and resources. Character, fashion, quality, style. All right. Strong's definition, taxis from Strong's G5021, regular arrangement, i.e. in time. Fixed succession of rank or character, official dignity, order. All right. And this, that, you know, pretty much goes without saying. If you call yourself... You know, sitting in the office of being a church head or something like that, you know, 
what you suppose that you know there's a certain uh reputation that comes with holding certain offices especially we you know with the deception that's been put out by esau eden the self-proclaimed so-called white man the devil that the bible speaks of you know people think that they can run to the church for um comfort and that you can actually find the true men of the lord in the church so for example the story the brother posted about the homeless um uh, not posted but the story the story that the brother Chapato 12 mentioned in his video about the homeless guy that ended up shooting up the church because i guess he's been you know shooed away by them too many times and i'm gonna post the link to the brother's uh video in, in the uh in the description box too stuff like that happens because we already know that you know all of us the, the nation of israel the so-called negroes latinos and native americans and speckled bird we all sinned against your howard bashmi al shah so we fell under the curses and part of those curses have to do with poverty all right but nevertheless you still have a um there's a certain expectation jake has that's the word i'm looking for the water you have shot a certain expectation jake has when they go to the church all right they feel like no matter how th hard things get i can turn to i can turn to god in the church okay despite the many scandals that come out showing that these people in the church are anything but serious about the heavenly father and his only begotten son they don't even read the law statutes and commandments out of the bible like that should be a, a red flag to anybody that's really serious about the heavenly father and his only begotten son especially since um lord yahweh shah said he came not to do away with the law or the prophets okay but let me get the other precept i had because now you know now i'm starting to flow in the spirit the water bust me out shah the book of first john chapter two okay and i'm gonna start at verse one and it reads my little children these things i write unto you that ye sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father yahweh shah hamashiach the righteous okay and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments Verse four, he that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. All right, I'll stop right there real quick for any potential bug outs. Let me get that word world again. And we got Strong's G 2889 Cosmos Cosmos. Cosmos, outline of biblical usage, an apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution, order or government. And we know this is talking about the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Not all nations. So this is why you got to get into the Hebrew and the Greek. There's three different Greek words for world. You got cosmos, which I just got. You have oikomene and you have aeon. Cosmos refers to, you know, people, like an entire nation of people. Like, for example, you have the world of Israel because... Amongst Israel, we have our own laws, statutes, and commandments given to us by Yahweh Bashmi El that makes us separate and above all nations. Then, you know, amongst animals, you got the lion world. Then you got the, you know, sea world. You know, not not the place you go to, to for entertainment, but the actual, you know, aquatic life. You know, it's a world in and of itself. Okay. Then you have Oikomene, which, you know, that, if I remember correctly, that refers more to, you know, the, the actual you know the earth itself okay the uh the habitable the inhabitable land and then you have aeon which gets into an earth age which is like okay this is the uh this is the era of the roman empire or this is the era of the byzantine empire this is the era of the moorish empire this is the era of uh the mongol empire you and you, you know you pretty much get the idea from there all right but the main point right here is verse four where it says he that saith i know him and so like I know him and keep it not his commandments is a lie and the truth is not in him. Yeah, because the Christian church, they don't keep the commandments of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah at all. And it's not even just about the Christian church, but speaking about the Christian church, because of what the brother Shapato 12 brought out in that video, it helped me um it helped stir me back up in the spirit so I can remember the uh the precepts that I need for this lesson. Okay. Um Yeah, but you know, Jake. As a whole, is just playing a dangerous game out here. You know, Jake talking about the names of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai don't matter. We don't got the true names. Uh, the word of 
uh, the Bible is not the word of God, but the word of God is found in the Bible. And that stupid crap earlier threw me off because when I was at the plantation, I was just thinking about it in my head as I was driving. I'm like, man, you saying the Bible is not the word of God, but the word of God is contained in the Bible. That's like saying. That's like saying I'm an Israelite. That's like saying I didn't. I didn't marry my girl. I didn't marry my woman. I didn't marry my wife. But we have seven kids. <laughs> like you see, it, that's that's the type of madness that goes out here, man. You don't like the beloved elder apostles Tahar and Gabar. I heard them say it a lot when I first came into the truth. They made countless videos, you know, with the zeal of Yahweh Bashmi on Shah and them saying, You niggas need to stop fucking playing with the most high, man. He's not the one to play any games with you. Like if you got kids, play some fucking games with them. Play Connect Four, play Uno, play some shit like that. But don't play with your Howard Bosch Meow Shy. All of us as a nation have done too much of what the Heavenly Father said not to do and what he delights not in. So the last thing you niggas can afford to do is sit out here playing games like you the new Grand Poobah, like Lord Yahweh Shah still isn't our Lord and Savior and the King of Israel. All right? He's not bound. Look. Lord Yahweh Shai is not bound by the flesh. He conquered death. He conquered the flesh. You know, nothing stopping him from stomping a mud hole in you niggas. Nothing stopping him from judging you niggas before the second coming. He can. He's he's been sending evil angels all over. The, like I don't think you Jakes watched Elder Hawaz in the news. <laughs> you need to watch it, man. It's not a game. The Lord is sending evil angels out every single day, and Jake is still playing games. Like you're not you're not even fooling you're not fooling the true men of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. So you certainly not fooling the holy angels that the Lord has set up as watchers over us, and you certainly not fooling His only begotten Son Yahweh Shai. And knowing that you're not fooling them, and He doesn't delight in the shit that you're doing, it would behoove you to fucking stop. Let me see if I can get that precept. I believe it's Jeremiah. Um, no, it's not that one. It's Jeremiah chapter. I'll just do it this way. Okay, it's, it's a lucky. It was Isaiah. The water y'all bust me on shot. Isaiah chapter one, verse five. And it reads, why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, it's like even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burnt with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate, Salaki, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Tezaiwan is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except Yahweh Tazabah had left unto us a very small remnant, we would have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Now, the elders and apostles have broken this down on countless occasions. That doesn't mean all of Jake would have became Moes. Even though you have Jake that are into Moism. It, but this is more so referring to how we would, we would have been completely destroyed as a nation with no return. All right. If the Lord hadn't left the remnant and the remnant has to put up with you stupid ass niggas. OK, because, yeah, Israel is a is a, a people before it's a place. It's like Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So in verse seven, where it says your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire. Your land, your strangers devoured in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Yeah, these these uh, these heathen, primarily these damn Amalekites, the head tribe of the Edomites, the red Hebrew Edomites, the devils of the Bible speak of, they did sack Jerusalem. All right. And they are currently trotting over Jerusalem until their time be fulfilled, as the scripture says. But. Our people are still being trodden over all over throughout the four corners of the earth. And you got Jake that's not trying to hold post. Jake not, 
you know, Jake signing up to join your how about me Shah's army just for the benefits, you know, just like Jake does right here in, in Esau's military. You join the military for uh, financial benefits and you knowing damn well you don't believe, you're not no damn patriotic American, which, you know, you shouldn't be if you had any damn sense. But you still are not you don't read the Jake don't read the fine print. Jake don't read it all. If you sign up for to be a soldier, you put yourself at the possibility of going to war. You can't afford to be double minded about that. You got to be willing to fight and ultimately die for what you believe in. But Jake don't understand that like the beloved brothers from the uh, GMS Dallas camp, they got into a while ago. They was getting to the, the book of judges, the first chapter. Um, how basically the all you know the tribes was going off, man. We wasn't getting the Canaanites out the land like Yahweh Bashmi Shah commanded. We kept making them uh, servants and slaves, and we kept uh, following their gods with their idols. And the scriptures even said that Yahweh Bashmi Shah even said they're going to be a thorn in our side because we didn't listen to them, and it it ended up happening. We went into multiple captivities, even before the most famous captivities that we know about, even before um we went into the captivities under the four different beasts, being the uh the Assyrio Babylonian captivity, the Medo Persian captivity, the Grecian captivity, and the Roman captivity. You know, even before those major captivities, we went into multiple captivities if you read the book of Judges. And I was surprised. I'm like, damn, what the fuck is wrong with my people? But then then I look in, you know, in real not in real time, Salakia, but in the present time, I'm like, damn, what the fuck is wrong with my people? I'm like, okay, yeah, the Bible is talking about my people, man. Nobody else would Literally, the elders and apostles say it all the time. If you, just like the scriptures say, if, if you were to preach this gospel to the damn heathen, they'd be chomping at the bit to be the chosen people. Like, oh, where do we sign up? What do we got to do? And then they would actively do it. Israel said the same thing, but Israel kept taking Yahweh Bashmi Shah for a joke, complaining all the way. And if you want to liken Israel into a, a woman and the Heavenly Father into a man that's doing right by her, you know. Israel gave Yahweh Bashmi Shah all the red flags to just say, nah, this 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 hoe ain't even worth it. But because he's merciful and he's long suffering, you know, instead of just leaving leaving us in the wilderness once we started to complain about the quail and the manna, the Heavenly Father, he had mercy on us, man. He just said, All right, this wicked generation won't see the promised land. That's it. But since he's merciful and since reincarnation is biblical, they came back in later generations. They just don't remember being those 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 Jakes. But the spirit, you know, the spirit beareth witness, man. They the same Jakes that was murmuring, talking shit. And they back the day with all types of damnable heresies. They back the day thinking everybody's stupid but them. I hate those stupid ass fucking cars. It's a lot of you. But yeah, man, like right now. But the point I was making is the beloved brothers, they was getting into how, you know, carnally speaking, well, not carnally, but the precept back then was we had to go to war and get these different Canaanite tribes out of the promised land. All right. Now, we're not going to war carnally. Now we're going to war spiritually, which would be going out to the highways and the hedges, preaching the true doctrine of Yahweh Bashmi al Shai. That's, you know, holding post as a, as a soldier of Yahweh Shai is supposed to do. But you got niggas basically, you know. Sleeping on the job. You got watchmen that's bullshitting, man. You got watchmen uh, that's basically letting letting foreigners into the gates. They're not checking them. They're not doing nothing, man. You got you got fucking so-called watchmen that's going to the enemy talking about you're more honorable than the apostles of Great Millstone. A bunch of fucking British cigarettes, man. Like, what the fuck is up with niggas? But then they want to keep portraying this fucking gangster image like, look, man, if if niggas didn't learn anything from all these rappers that keep trying to portray a gangster image. Nothing's going to teach niggas that shit does not make you a man. Because these type of niggas get bought out by Esau every single day as the blood of Elder Apostle Hall said, you can buy a nigga cheap. Let me get that precept. I believe it's the book of second Ezra chapter nine. And I believe it's verse seven. Is it verse seven? Salaki, so verse 10. No, nah, I'm sorry, verse nine. Second Ezra chapter nine, verse nine. And it reads, they, Salaki, so then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life received benefits and have not known me. 
Yeah, because these niggas, they so focused on carnal, carnal wealth and stuff, kind of like uh, our wicked, uh, you know, our wicked brethren was back during the day, during the days of the time of judges, you know. They kept they kept taking it. They went too far with the whole, OK, we can't destroy the Canaanites we made a covenant with. So let's keep making them hewers of water and uh, it's like yeah, hewers of wood and drawers of water. They kept taking it way too far, man. After a while, you know. Uh, like the brothers got into, Israel couldn't even receive a full land inheritance because they kept letting heathen, they kept letting the heathen stay that was supposed to be destroyed out of the land so you can receive the full inheritance, man. You kept mixing cultures with them. And because of the beloved brothers getting into that, Barak thought you how me shy. I started to realize that that's probably why when I first got into the truth, you know, there was some stumbling blocks there. Like I would see things like, uh, the Canaanite God El and his wife, um, uh, Asherah and all this other bull crap. Basically, you know, these Canaanite deities and their take on, you know, whatever the fuck. Esau pushed that like we stole um the worship of the of, of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah from the Canaanite religion. No, that was that was always the bullshit out of the Canaanites worship, you know. But we but Yah the worship of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, it predates all of that. It goes back to the garden before there was a Canaanite. When we were uh, when we were still the Adamites, and even to the times after that when we became the sons of God, then the Hebrews, all right. But the point is, these Jakes they they get bought easily, man. They think about the carnal stuff, like oh yeah, let's just keep having them as our as our slaves, and we can keep popping their women and X Y Z. Yeah, but then you fucking lose your masculinity and your soul gets defiled because you are going to simp. You are going to think it's okay to mix the worship of Yahweh Bashmi on Shabbat with fucking Asterisk. The Lord at no time told you that he needed a wife or that he even had a wife. So why the hell would you believe this Canaanite bullshit? And that aside, why the hell would you go after any of these idols when, the, like the brother said, the first, first commandment was, thou shalt have no gods before me. Then the Lord even gave you the rundown of why you should not fuck around and find out. And Jake fucked around and found out. He said, because I'm a jealous power visiting the iniquity Upon the children, even to the third or fourth generation of those that hate me, roughly paraphrasing. Letting you know that, yeah, I'm a, if look, I'm going to get you in the reincarnation if you go off. Jake kept fucking going off. And now in present time, we got these stupid ass niggas that keep on thinking that everybody's stupid but them because they finesse their congregation. Because they, they congregation are a bunch of, you know, just they just ditzy, man. Because their congregation is ditzy, they think all of us. Are ditzy. They think even the men that rebuke them, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and the sincere Archimon down, and those that teach the likewise doctrine, they think that that they can pull a fast one. Like it's obvious to see. It's obvious to see from the most seasoned, um, from the most seasoned apostles in the truth, all the way down to the younger brothers in the truth. It's easy to see when your how about me on shy is dealing with you. And it's not and it's not to be said to be boastful, but it's just letting you know that's the that's that's sort of glory in the name of your how about me. I could be magnified. All right, because you got grown ass men in their 30s and 40s and 50s falling for the Sakari bullshit. What's the difference between the men of Great Millstone, men of Valor, S.O.Y.W.Y. and those that teach the likewise doctrine compared to Sakari, I.S.U.P.K., I.U.I.C., uh, uh, Fopi, Wi-Fi, One Body and Satan. And all these other bug out camps. What's the difference? It's not age. It's not, oh yeah, you will. We got more older people in our camp than you. So we, or we got more young people. Like it's not that. It's the spirit and power of your how about me all shy. It's us coming, coming back to the Lord through his only begotten son in meekness and in sincerity. And before that, you know, it's all about who the Lord ordained to be called into this truth. And then from there, you got to work to make sure that you're chosen. We'll work to get that revealed unto you. Just like if you was in a lottery or a raffle or something like that. But this is, you know, this is like the, this is like the most important. Not sloppy, this is the most important raffle to be a part of. And Jake, don't take it seriously. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law, which means you hated it while they had yet liberty, which is this grace period. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. Yeah, because the beloved Elder Yahshua, but he had got into it earlier. About how these dumbass jakes keep trying to boast in the law, but then hop, they keep trying to hop between first covenant to grace period, grace period, first covenant, 
first covenant grace period when it's convenient for them. But not knowing how much of a double minded asshole that makes you, man, you can't try to justify yourself in the law. Nigga, just by first off, if it's Sakari talking about the fucking law, I wish they would just fucking stop. Because I don't even really see Sakari wearing any fringes in a border of blue. No, no, those fringe T-shirts don't fucking count. That shit is just fucking stupid and it's tacky. But more importantly, if they're trying to boast in the law, nigga, in the eyes of your how about me on shot, your head, you already stoned because you niggas is wearing hats and you won't just take off the fucking hat. That's something simple. That's a base level of respect, man. So if you can't get the simple stuff out the way, how are you going to handle the more weightier matters of the law? No, nah, that's that, that's why the Yahweh Bashmi on Shah, his judgments is perfect. It's perfectly set up to show you who's sincere and who's a fucking worthless ass nigga, man. Faking the funk for the wrong for all the wrong reasons and just waiting to be missile food. Lest they repent, which ain't looking too likely. But ultimately, Yahweh Bashmi on Shah's will be done. He knows we we know in part, we prophesy in part. But yeah, that type of stuff. You can't jump between, oh, well, you know, keep the law. Well, we're justified in the law. We don't need Yahweh Shai. When it's convenient for you and you want to be big chief priest Levite. But you not even you nowhere near on the Lord's level, man. You not, you didn't walk a single day in any of your incarnations, especially this one, where you kept the law a hundred percent perfectly. All of us came up, you know, all of us was like, okay, close but no bullseye. All of us went off. Even the ones you see in the Bible that the Lord counted as righteous. It was through, always through grace. It was always through Yahweh Shai. By the technicality of the law, Abraham, he's, he's condemned. Like the blood of Yahshua also gets into. Abraham would be condemned because he received those promises before he was circumcised. The Lord was dealing with him before he was circumcised. He was raised in heathenistic customs in the original Babel. In the original Babylon, known as Babel, and Ur of the Chaldees. His father, Terah, was an idol worshiper. So what the hell do you think Abraham, who do you think, what do you think our father Abraham was doing while he was in his father's house before Yahweh Bashmiel Shai decided to deal with him? He had no, he had no choice but to follow the rules of his father. On top of that, he was raised that way. So he didn't know anything else until Yahweh Bashmiel Shai uh, restored the, uh, the true ways back unto him. And then gave him the covenant of circumcision. So you jakes that wear fucking snapback caps, brain sticks to camp when the Lord says, <laughs> don't get the ministry blamed. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. All right. When, when we were told the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. You don't do those things. You jakes don't have uh, I, to my knowledge i doubt you jakes have any textiles or any looms you own where you can wear 100 percent of one fabric because if you're wearing mixed fabrics you're going off and these are things that the wadi how about me shot the apostles and the elders of great millstone and occupant down to teach the likewise doctrine they keep rehashing you know which keeps me sharp on that but those things right there those are laws that i kept on thinking about when i was new in the truth like even newer than i am now So if you don't do these simple things, how are you justify? Because if you break one law, you're guilty of breaking them all. Verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. It's not a game, man. You're how about your shot? He's not going to be saving the whole nation of Israel this time. He's not doing it. You niggas didn't show why that's a bad idea. It's a waste. You, you basically only a nigga can fuck up mercy. Long suffering. Only a nigga. Only a nigga. Let me see if I can get that in the book of James. I believe it's James chapter 2. Okay. Salaki. I think it's James 4. No, Salakia, I'm getting it wrong again. I 
Ah, the water here by Shmuel Shah. This is the book of James, chapter. James chapter 2, verse 8, and it reads, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. And Sakari does that bullshit, man. Especially your boy Deacon Damage Control. He's sitting right here trying to defend his boy's Alizar's bullshit as well as his own, you know, bearing false witness, talking about they didn't say what they said about Paul. Like, bro, that's part of the reason why I don't, I don't fucking like Sakari. That's part of the reason why a lot of Jake's that Yahweh Bosh Mio is dealing with don't like Sakari. And it's not like a personal I don't like. It's I don't like you because you're a damn heretic. You're a damn heretic group. You fucking hypocrites and liars. And keeping that in the spirit, that helps us to apply Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Mark them which cause offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. That helps us do that. Because a, a, a fucking a dude that will do that has no accountability. You can't trust these type of dudes, man. You got to mark them. It's nothing for a dude to tell a bold faced lie like that. Verse 10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend at one point, is he is guilty of all. Yeah, so you can't hop between, I'm going to get back on that. You can't hop between first covenant to grace period when it's convenient for you. All right. The Lord didn't say, oh, you niggas got a, uh, you niggas is Goku and you can go from a uh, base mode to Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan 2 and back down. No, nigga. You're under grace. You're under grace. Which you're abusing so far. So if we're under the grace period, that still doesn't mean be a nigga and break the law. You still have to keep the laws that you can keep. And it's very easy to take the stupid ass, tacky ass fucking hats off. That's simple. That's a show of faith. That's like the bare minimum of, of offering up your body as a living sacrifice. As much as you know you want to put a hat and cover that fucking bald spot or whatever the fuck it is. Or you, the head shape you're insecure about. You take it off of your how about me shy. That's showing that, okay, I may not be the best at this, Lord, but I'm giving it a try. He'll, sup, he'll deal with you on some level. He'll build you up the way you need to be built up but when you just want to be a nigga and you feel like oh because um oh yeah well the apostle said it. i'm not going to listen to him nigga yeah how about me on shot set these men up that's the order the lord is never going to come down off his throne in heaven and tell you anything you're not that important you niggas already think that you're important enough to talk about yahweh shah is going to pay tithes in the kingdom of heaven in his kingdom paying tithes to you niggas who needed him just so you can have an opportunity to be priests Bug outs make this they, bug outs make exposing them so damn easy. Jake is playing too many fucking games, man. If you wanted to play games with niggas and lie to niggas and then and then get off on it, I, you could have stayed in the fucking world. You could have stayed doing whatever doofy ass gangbang nigga shit you was doing before and just left it at that. But no, you want to bring that nigga shit into the truth because you see that the truth sells. You damn Playboy Passovers. And I'm not saying you're supposed to do that. That's fucking wicked. And it's wicked that Jake even thinks about making money on the Passover of all days. Where we're supposed to be having a solemn assembly and remembering Yahweh Shai. Niggas just don't. <laughs> it's like niggas are gluttons for, glutton for punishment, man. Salakia. And let me get let me pull up a precept out of the prophets, you know, the law and the prophets, first covenant. All right. <sighs> this is the book of Psalms, chapter two. I'm going to start at verse seven and it reads, I will declare the decree. Yahweh hath said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be admon so it. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, Yahweh Shai. Reverence Yahweh Shai. 
lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Let's read that in the NLT for anybody that may make the excuse about the old English being complicated. Psalm chapter 2, verse 12 on the right hand side in the NLT and it reads, Submit to the Most High's royal son or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities for his anger, so like it, for his anger flares up in an instant. But what joy for all who take refuge in him. So, no, nah, you niggas ain't taking refuge in Yahweh shot. You niggas are talking about you under the first covenant. Niggas talking about they keeping the law perfectly. When was the last time any of you niggas properly kept the Passover? And the beloved Elder Yahshua, but he made, man, it's like he sent the barrage of, <laughs> it was like he sent the barrage of basically like bazooka rockets at whoever earlier because he got he made one point that completely destroys your whole delusion you say you keep you say you about to keep the passover technically you're supposed to keep it in jerusalem they would also made the point that there's a certain way we're supposed to sacrifice the lamb for the passover can't be getting no daggone halal lamb from ishmael or whatever lamb you may get from elam because they offer that onto their idols. How are we able to just buy lamb from the store and keep the Passover through Yahweh Shai? So you're either covered by Yahweh Shai or you're saying, nah, I'm going to rough it out on my own. With no money. No shelter. No protection from the elements. Through. Metaphorically speaking, of course, through. So this right here is in the law and the prophets. This is referring to the only begotten son. They don't make it. They don't make too much of a distinction between. They're not like it's like they. They come off like they're closet Old Testament Israelites because <laughs> a few of the argument, a few of the elders have said already. It's only a matter of time. Like it wouldn't surprise us, but only a matter of time before Sakari just outright says they don't believe in Yahweh Shai. Because how the hell a nigga says the, the book of Hebrews ain't ain't authoritative, then the writings of Paul ain't authoritative. Bro, that's like the wise the wisest observation to make at a point like that would be to assume that nigga you're trying to slowly but surely create a doctrine and creep in a doctrine that X's out Yahweh Shai, which would make you a bunch of damn anti messiahs. Now, let's get on about this stupid ass stuff that they keep talking about pertaining this whole keep the law. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1, and it reads, you can see Melchizedek's priesthood like Yahweh Shai's. And on the right hand side, you see Melchizedek is greater than Abraham. Okay. Verse 1. In the KJV on the left hand side. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high power, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of kings, blessed him. To whom Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. But made like unto the son of the most high abideth a priest continually we got into this before about how the high priest under the order of aaron from the tribe of levi you lose that once you pass on okay also the high priest had to make an atonement every year for his sins as well as the sins of the entire congregation lord yahweh shah only had to make this once and he offered himself up not an animal the Levitical priesthood was always a shadow of the true heavenly priesthood. And yes, it was a beautiful thing, but no, nigga, no one's going to be offering up sacrifices to you. A nigga that can't even take his damn hat off. Niggas that can't even take their damn hats off. Niggas that don't understand your Yahweh Shai. Verse 4. Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Verse five, and this is a cut to Sakari with that whole 
Yahweh Shah is going to pay tithes to the Levitical priesthood in the kingdom, bro. Just stop fucking, stop doing drugs. Verse 5. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they came out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is better so like the less is blessed of the better. OK, and here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. So Yahweh Shai, when he was Melchizedek, no father, no mother in that perfect eternal body. Priest of the most high, the high priest of the most high God. So like I'll say it exactly the way it's written. Priest of the Most High God. He received tithes and he was a priest that has no end. His priesthood has no ending. His life has no ending. He's eternally that priest. Verse nine. And as I may say so. So like and as I may so say, Levi also who received tithes paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father Abraham when Melchizedek met him. This reminds me of that old, of a few old metaphors like, look, man, you wasn't even born yet. You was in your father's nutsack when I was on XYZ. So we got a bunch of, we got a bugged out Levite talking about how Yahweh Shah is going to pay tithes to the Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priesthood will not be, we have multiple scriptures that lets it be known that in the kingdom is going to be the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek which is not after a carnal commandment. Jake is playing a dangerous game. Like just when you really stop, like the beloved of Yahshua says, stop, drink some water, breathe. All right. Then you start to see and hear how fucking blasphemous and stupid you sound. And you wonder why GMS rebukes you. You wonder why those that teach the likewise doctrine rebukes you. This is fucking madness it fulfills the scripture that says if possible they would deceive even the very elect but it's not possible for the elect to be deceived but nevertheless we still have to mark those that cause divisions contrary to the doctrine and avoid them avoid them like this dude has a damn satellite laser trained on him you see the reticle beeping you see him not moving he asks you to hang out with him and you and i'm like hell no nah. you about to be you about to be through you about to be particles that's how you how about me shot is going to do these burnt these burnt out ass jakes, man. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, listen to how that sounds. You so you gotten so damn far in your pride. This based on the reports. Always been unruly and all this other type of stuff. This goes from small things like take your hat off and you saying no to now the pride you had there to mutate it into. Yahweh Shah is going to pay tithes to me in the kingdom because I'm a Levite. And because I have people fooled in the flesh on this side, in this temporal kingdom. In which I am in captivity and I would have no rights to the priesthood. Except it had been for Yahweh Shai. I'm saying this slow so it can make sense to me and anybody who may be listening. How the hell does that work? The Alas all completely forget that being a daggone Levite, and this ain't no slight to any of the Le sincere Levite brothers, but Alas all, fuck, it did not occur to him that being a Levite is not what opens you up to the priesthood because you're not under the first covenant. And more importantly, all 12 tribes broke the first covenant. Lord Yahweh Shah shed his blood for the establishment of the new covenant. Right now, we're under the grace period. He poured down the Rechak Wadash so all 12 tribes could receive the understanding of these scriptures and get certain sneak previews of the benefits of the second covenant being priests after the order of Melchizedek, not after the order of Aaron. After the order of Aaron, where, oh, you just have only the tribe of Levi as the priest and whoever comes from the lineage of Aaron out of the tribe of Levi eligible for high priest. Uh, No, now Yahweh Shai, who... 
is Salakia, our Lord and Savior. He is revealed to be the true high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And all 12 tribes are priests under him. Simple. It's not hard. All 12 tribes have to go to the altar. The new altars is the camps going out to the highways and the hedges and preaching the word. Okay. Let me see. Salakia. Kind of typing this messed up. Priest. Where is it at? Dwadi Habash Shah. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 110. And I'm going to just start at verse 1. Yahweh, Salakia, a Psalm of David. Yahweh said unto my Lord, who's David's Lord, Yahweh Shah, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Yahweh shall send the rod of thy strength out of Tazirwan. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Verse 4. Yahweh hath sworn and he will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay. So... Even in the law, those that were in the spirit, they, they could perceive this, man. King David, the Lord revealed this to him. He already revealed to King David what level Yahweh Shah was on. King David was the king of Israel, and he called Yahweh Shah his Lord. So who the hell are you niggas? Old Testament only niggas. Sakari. Who the hell are you niggas? But that's all I have for this epistle, man. You know, hopefully it's edifying to the elected of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elected of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukha HaKwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere argument of Ray Millstone, who rule well, who teach well. Who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear for bearing a sincere salutation is always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among their number, which are the Hebrews, life foreign, scattered among the heathen. They look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and the Baba Ball. We almost out of here. Adwan Ratazah, and we got next Adwan Ratazah. Shema Yasha Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad. Shalom.